United States, with its long harvesting season, was an essential part of our worldwide test program. We begin with Tim Meister, marketing manager for North America, taking Peter Lauer from the Zweibrücken factory team to meet the two X8 prototypes in Central California. Well, right now we're driving uh, west of Tulare, California, in the San Joaquin Valley. We're in Tulare County right now, the largest dairy county in the entire world. We feed a lot of different things uh, for cows. Obviously, we have dry hay, some haylage, uh, a lot of uh, wheat silage, barley silage. The mainstay would be corn silage. When they arrived, the team were busy getting the machines ready. Um, we're at our contractor, uh, Vieira Custom Shopping. They're located in Tulare, California. Uh, they have typically uh, about 15 John Deere forage harvesters, and they do, uh, I think, close to 30,000 acres of corn out here. So that's primarily why our test site's located here. We can get a lot of testing in in one area without having to travel very far. So. Testing had already been running for several months, and the team were making real progress. At the moment, we have two X8 machines running. Here in California, the harvest is only just starting. We were in Arizona with one machine, mainly because the temperatures climb above 40 degrees, close to 50 degrees, to test the layout of the cooling package and find out if we got the layout right. To do that, you need to go where the temperatures are highest. Now we're back in California, my impression is positive. What makes the conditions here so challenging? On the one hand, it's the fact that we have different types of row spacing. We have 30 inches, 38 inches, very different water systems, and the soil types vary greatly. In regards to the tires on the forage harvester, it's a big challenge that we don't find elsewhere. That is one challenge. Another is that the harvest here in California, massive amounts of sun and water, targeted irrigation, leads to output of over 100 tons per hectare. And that is mainly a challenge for the header. In general, I would say the Kemper header, as it's still known around the world today, is clearly top of the line. We don't need to hide, but we must go further. We're standing here in front of a 10-row header, large drum. We have a smaller drum for the Western European market, and the large drum is for the conditions here. The 10-row header is done. We're going further. We must make it wider, also because forage harvester performance continues to increase. Despite the heavy crop, the kernel processor was handling the extra throughput well. What I can tell you, it's processed really well. There's no pieces, big pieces of cobs that the cow can sort. All the kernels are broken into smaller pieces. And uh, one thing you notice is the crop is a lot wetter than it actually looks here in the field. It's, 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 it's higher moisture than what it really would appear to be. And so the stalk is carrying a little bit more moisture than, than what it looks like uh, standing. Okay, but doesn't that make it harder then for the machine to process the, the, the crop as well? Or? No, that is one thing that makes it difficult, that the harder the kernel it is, the harder it is to process. But with our 32% speed differential that we've had in Kernel Star, I think with the 7000 series, we're doing a good job, but this is excellent processing needs. Yes. Uh, the crop flow through the machine is nice. It's a nice tight uh, exit from the spout. The kernel processor is running really well. Uh, thus far, the machine's performed well. It's got a it's been putting out a little bit more tonnage than the 7950 when we had it down in Arizona. We were putting about 35 tons more per hour than uh, 7950 does. So that's quite impressive. Matthew Sapada, Chief Financial and Chief Operating Officer of Vieira Custom Chopping, was equally impressed by the chop quality. So far, so good. It seems to be good on fuel. It's been, the processing has been good. Uh, the production is very good. 
Uh, early on, when we talked about it, you commented a bit on the cone head. What do you think uh, from the performance of the cone head compared to the the, the 770s that you had? Yeah, the, I'll tell you, the 10 row this year has been doing a fantastic job so far. Best job uh, I've seen since it's been out. And I'm very impressed with, as you can see right here, nice job, low to the ground. What are what are the customers expecting in regards of chopping? Uh, they would ultimately like 100% of the kernels cracked. What you see here is a very good job. Uh, you see them all broke up into at least three to four pieces. We don't see we don't see whole pieces anywhere. The chop looks good. It's not shredded. Uh, looks like we got the KPs about right. And it looks like our particle length is pretty consistent. So that's exactly what they're looking for. But what was the view of the driver? Really the biggest thing for me, or one of the biggest things right now, is the uh, cab. We have more room in the cab and better visibility, so that's a big thing. And then we have some other options on the header that we don't, or the machine that we don't have on our current production machines, like a variable speed header drive, so that's really valuable. So yeah, talking about the cab, how do you rate the visibility out of the cab? especially in those uh, 12 mate conditions? I'd say it's a nine out of a 10. You're always gonna have that corner post in the way, but for the most part, you can see really well. The only thing, on the machine I was driving, it's got the low spec cab, which doesn't have the side wipers, so it's a little bit harder to keep the dust off the windows, but we always deal with dust out here, so you're gonna have to get out and clean the windows a couple times a day, it's just the way it is. So you would definitely take a cab that has the side wipers in too? Definitely. Clearly, a lot of progress has been made in the past two years of testing. We're on track. We know that a forage harvester doesn't just fall from the sky. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. The key lies in testing a machine like this around the world to verify, that's the motto, so that we can be certain that we can take it to market. We are in the long-term test phase. We are on track, but we still have some homework to do, quite simply. Uh, wir sind im Plan, aber wir haben noch so manche Hausaufgabe zu tun. Ganz eindeutig. Part of that work was refining the final designs in response to customer comments. Find out how the team at Zweibrücken were progressing in the next episode.